Um, I don't believe anything happens by accident. Uh, last Sunday, in case some of you may have missed it, we had a minor snowstorm. <laughs> and uh, strangely, when, when I stood up to preach, there wasn't as many people here. We had people. But there just wasn't this many people. So, so, so I, I uh, decided, uh, actually I was obedient and um, heard, don't preach or teach what you were going to do today. I'm going to keep you for a week so you can do it next Sunday. Next Sunday is here. I um, normally... The first Sunday of every year will uh, cast a vision for that year for our faith community. Some of you may remember we, a couple of years ago, talked about loving God and loving others and serving others. And so today, with all due respect to Archie Bell and the Drill. <laughs>
All right, all right. Uh, 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 it's what's mine is mine. Uh, it, it's my ministry. It, it's my church. And the fact of the matter is that it's not mine. The ministry is not mine. The word is not mine. And even though the name on the front may say Centennial, the church is the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. So it, it's not mine, it, it's the Lord. We're just here basically taking care of what God has placed us in charge of, right? Amen. All right, so, so that was one of the problems that we had uh, and we need to work on. Uh, also, uh, 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 we have a lack of focus or clarity. Uh, 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 and I just, I don't want anybody to raise your hand and, 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 and uh, put yourself out there. <laughs> but there are certain vows that we take when we join a church. We vow that we will be loyal to our church with our prayers and our presence and our gifts as tithes and offerings. <laughs> and our service, and our witness. Our witness. Now, the witness is not something where we talk Jesus, but walk something else. <laughs> and the question that I ask is, when was the last time... I'm trying not to look at anybody. <laughs> when was the last time you invited somebody by not just your words, but your actions and attitude to know Jesus. When was the last time? Hmm. Don't tell. Don't tell. And then, the question, because I talked about rice bowls, you know, how often in 2013, when we had something go well for us, uh, could it point directly back to our vision of loving God? and loving others and, and serving others? Or did what our accomplishment point back to us? You know, what I'm saying is did what we do make us look good and not necessarily glorify God? All right. All right. The vision for 2014 begins with basically possessing a spiritual maturity. We have got to learn how to grow in Christ. We have got to get to the point where our walk actually matches our talk. Amen. You know, the, 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 the litmus test for a Christian is do they actually live like they know Christ? <laughs> Not can they talk Christ. Because, you know, all of us can talk Jesus on Sunday morning. <laughs> Some of us can talk Jesus in a whole bunch of different ways. <laughs> but if we're talking some other language, now I'm not even going to say in our home. I'm going to say in the parking lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or on the stairs. Or in a meeting. Or on our job. Are we actually walking our talk? And then we must witness and invite the world to know Jesus. Yeah. That's why we're here. This is not one of those things where we sit back and say, I want somebody else to do it. My daddy used to always tell me that the most effective sermon I would ever preach would be the one where I didn't open my mouth. <laughs> Can y'all imagine that? <laughs> but truly, the most effective sermon that, we, that any of us can preach is how we live our life. Because believe it or not, if we say we are Christian, somebody's going to be watching us to see if we know Christ. Somebody. So, what we're talking about then is trying to bring about a realization of the kingdom of heaven or the reign of God. And it begins and ends with us being a missional people. I didn't say missionary. Let me help you out with, 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 with what I mean when I say missional and not missionary. And this is really, really, really just breaking it down to brass tacks. Any of y'all ever watched the old Tarzan movies? <laughs> I did. 
did. I used to love the Johnny White smuggler. Yeah. Tarzan. Yeah. yeah, I like the old Tarzan. Yeah. 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 I like Johnny White smuggler. And, 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 and in every one of those movies, there was always uh, uh, the, the, these uh, folks that would come in uh, that were doing the safaris or whatever, and they would conquer or bring civilization to an uncivilized people. Y'all y'all with me? They, they, they came in and, and, and they took over wherever they were coming into. And so if, if the people that were there did not necessarily go along with what they were bringing, then instead of them coming with their hand out, they'd come with a gun out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trying to teach for a minute. Those are sometimes missionary-minded folk. You know, we're coming in to bring something better. We're coming in to show you how to do it the right way. We're coming in and you're going to do it our way or it's the highway. Missional is a little different. We'll get to that in a minute. But, but missional is not uh, me coming in and taking over. Missional is me coming in and working as a partner. As a partner. All right, so, so, so uh, here's the bottom line for us to become a missional people. We cannot address the needs of our community if we do not spend time in our community. What, 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 what do I mean by that? What I mean is that if all we ever do in the name of Jesus is come to church on Sunday, then we're missing the boat. If, if all we ever do uh, in the name of Jesus is show up every once in a while when the weather's good and the moon is full and the planets are alive and everybody's smiling and knows our name, then we are missing the boat. We have got to get outside the four walls of a church house and go in this community. And they'll say, well, where are you? Or what do you do? And I say, I tell them, you know, well, they tell me I'm a pastor. <laughs> and I'll say, well, where are you pastor? And I'll say Centennial. And they'll say, what's that? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> All right, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But let's, let's move on. I'll, I'll just say it's time. Uh, we need to tighten up. All right. We need to tighten up. I'm not going to start dancing. <laughs> so, 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 what does our community look like? One of the things, and I want to make sure that I, I thank uh, uh, Reverend Riles and, and, and Minister Washington and Minister McDaniel and Minister Ricketts. You all helped uh, tremendously with this. Uh, I asked them to look at the demographics for an area around our church and come back with some ideas, talk about what's going on in the neighborhood and, and how can we become a partner in the neighborhood. And so uh, the one thing that really jumped out was eye-opening is that we are truly in a diverse community. Yeah. And when, when I say diverse, I mean, I don't think some of y'all may understand what I mean by diverse. So, so let me say it a different way. We are truly a melting pot yes, five miles around this spot. Yes, I mean, there's a little bit of everything. Yes, five miles around this spot. Yes, we can find every race, yes. every ethnicity. Yes. We can find single parent and two parent households. We can find uh, single family dwellings and we can find tenement apartments. We can go ahead and find uh, school age children and, and college students and, and high school dropouts. We can find every kind of person five miles around this building. Right. We find people who are straight and people who are gay. We find people who are loving life and people who are trying to take life. Five miles around this building. We have people who want to help and we have people who want to hurt. Five miles around. 
You know, they finally reached the penthouse in the sky. They got their slice. They're Jefferson. Y'all never watched Jefferson? And then we have folks who are homeless. Right here in this community. And we have folks who say, I have no room for religion, but I'm a little spiritual. You know, kind of like, uh, he's a little bit country. But it's a very diverse community. And because it is so diverse, I truly believe that affords us an opportunity to make an impact. A positive impact in the community, not taking over but becoming a part of the community. So when I talk about being missional, uh, Reverend Browse and I, we spent quite a bit of time uh, at the St. Paul School of Theology, earning our Masters in Divinity, <laughs> learning about being missional. And you know, what they write in the book is not always what, what, what it is. I just gotta say it like that. You know, they write, the, the words sound really, really good, but getting out there and making it work, woo, I mean, but really, missional is about showing God or allowing God to show us where we fit in the neighborhood. You know, it, when we talk about being missional, it's about God's mission in the world. What does God want for the world? I personally believe that God wants us to be a, a, a world where we are loving each other and not killing each other. Right. I believe that God wants us to be a world where we do not have folks who are starving to death or living in automobiles. I believe that God wants us to be a world where we are loving and nurturing our children and not turning them out on the street. I believe that God wants us to be a world where there's more love in the home than there is in the game. That's what I believe. Now, 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 it's not just about God's mission in the world, but also God's mission in the world through Jesus Christ. Why did Jesus come? Jesus came because we were so broken we could not fix ourselves. Jesus came because we had fallen so far away from where we were supposed to be that we needed somebody to come and bring us back into right relationship. So, so where do we fit in that? Where do we fit in that? You know, uh, I, I, I believe this, this last line, you know, and that is that God calls us to participate by becoming oriented to the mission and others in the context of our church. Uh, what, what, what that means, all that means is, where does the church fit into the neighborhood? Right. I can say this right now, times have changed. And that time when the church was the, 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 the place where folks looked for leadership, that time is gone. I know that folks don't want to hear that, but it's true. What they're looking for now is, how can you help us improve our life? How can you help us find hope instead of hiding? How can you help us become a different kind of people? So what we've got to do now is get past the point of saying we want to leave and just get to the place where we say we can show you a different way. It's about being a partner. It's about being a partner. What that may mean is that we have to become a community resource center. We may have to be that place where folks can come for job fairs. We may have to be that place where folks can come for college fairs. We may have to be that place where folks can come just to get their blood pressure checked. We have to be a community resource. Where do we fit in? I'm almost done. I know y'all said, Lord, I didn't know I was going to come in here and... <laughs> Talking about tightening it up. Tightening it up. So, so uh, I make the statement, uh, like almost every other endeavor that we deem or the world deems as a success, there is also a process. We have to, you know, we're not going to just blink our eyes or twitch our nose. Y'all never saw me wish. <laughs> and, 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 and things are just going to magically happen. You know, we, we, we have to actually 
work a process. Okay, so the first part in the process is acknowledging, acknowledging the cause of our weariness. Because, you know, one of the things that we talked about earlier was there was a lack of focus or clarity uh, that we noticed in 2013. And, and, and I couldn't figure out what it was because I know that there are some truly driven and, and, and uh, people in this church who really want the best. Uh, and, and then it hit me. You know, we have been rocked by death. I, 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 don't, I don't know about the other churches. I can't talk about the other churches. But I have never in my life done so many funerals than I did in 2013. I, 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 I mean, and, and if I wasn't actually officiating or preaching a funeral, it seemed like I was sending a letter of condolence or going at, at, in support of someone else who was going through something. I mean, it wore our church family out. It wore us out. And if you didn't get tired, I got tired for you. It got so bad that, that, that I would hear my phone ring and I would be afraid to answer it. Because I'm thinking to myself, the other shoe is about to drop. Am I the only one that felt that way? I felt so bad for our ushers and, and hospitality folks because it seemed like we had more ushers who had lost. Increase 
uh, our membership. We are expected to increase the number of ministers going into the ministry. And I said this in the leadership retreat, and I do believe this. I, you know, we are truly blessed to have all of these wonderful saints who have said yes to the Lord, and yes, I will serve. It's not what am I going to get coming in, 
is what am I bringing coming in? And, 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 and I need to make sure I say this the right way so uh, folks understand. You know, every church is not for everybody. And I believe that every church that tries to do everything really does nothing well. Amen. So, so, so one of the things that we're going to really, really focus on is doing what we do well. It may, it, it may mean that we do less than what we've done. But whatever we do, we're going to do it well. Whatever we do, we're going to do the best that we can. And I'm going to say this as plainly as I can. You know, most folks have pride in what they do. Uh, on your job, there's pride. The, the reputation of your name, there's pride. If you invite someone to your home, there's pride. You know, the church should be the same way. Whatever we do for Christ should be our best. Our best. Not perfect, but
talking about uh, uh, working together to do some, some, some different things. And, and one of the things that came out of that was uh, uh, having uh, uh, prom dresses to, 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 to give away. Because, you know, um, uh, some of our young ladies don't have the dresses. You know, and then you see some of them dressed any kind of way. Because they don't have the dresses. So, 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 we, put, we talked about this, and so we're going to go ahead and we're going to partner and be a place where folks can come and pick up prom dresses. But during the leadership retreat, one of the things that came out of that meeting was, well, why do we have to just limit it to prom dresses? You know, a lot of our young men don't know how to wear a suit. Lovingly, lovingly, 
pull. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do whatever it takes for us to get out into the community. So what I'm saying is that if, you know, you've heard me say, we don't do bench members. Trust me, we're going to a whole new level in 2014. I'm going to challenge everybody. 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 To do something where we carry Jesus beyond the four walls of this building. Everybody. You're not too young. You're not too old. You're not too uneducated. You're not too educated. You're not too married. You're not too single. You don't have too many children. You don't have enough children. There's nothing you cannot do. You don't have a car. Pick up the phone. But we've got to get to the place where we can carry Jesus beyond the four walls. And in 2014, we will. Right. Now, here's reality. There may be somebody here who wants to become a part of this. If you're there, I would invite you to come. But be serious. 